Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast, the second episode for 2022. This week, we're with a nice big group, so it's great to see everyone. So I might even just start by going around the uh, room and seeing how everyone's doing this second week of 2022. So I'll start with uh, our most well-dressed in terms of shirt style, our CEO, Graham Gerstenberg. And if you're not watching it, I highly recommend you jump on the YouTube channel and take a look at what we're dealing with here. But Graham, how are you going? Thanks, Jess. I'm great. Uh, good to see everybody again. Happy Friday. I am rocking uh, my Thursday Island Friday flower shirt um, for those of you who care, which <laughs> probably is everybody. <laughs> I'm excited about the weekend. We're helping uh, our daughter Olivia move house tomorrow and possibly Sunday, which is always something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> well very exciting uh hopefully you'll be as stylish doing that as you are here today so that'll be cool probably not <laughs> uh, our next guest is uh on their first podcast for 2022 kanika chopra how are you going this week yeah i'm going good the weather's been like really nice and warm and summery i got my permanent residency here i booked tickets to go back home and visit my family so big week, very big week, but very nice week. Very good. A great week. Uh, John Scullin, you're back for this year. How are you going? Oh, look, great to be back. Rather, nowhere else I'd rather be on a Friday. Perfect. Perfect. Well, it's good to have you back as well. And Danette, uh, how are you going? I'm going awesome, Jess. Had a great week. Had a number of critters join us either inside or outside the house. Yesterday, we had a lizard that was about this big. He was a monster. So cute. But we got him outside, which was beautiful. Awesome. We've also had a gecko in the house this week. It's just nice. an exciting uh, season for animals, I guess. Um, <laughs> and as as we all have to be when there are animals, sometimes that requires a bit of patience. It's called a segue, everybody. Uh, and this week, we're talking about the power of patience. Uh, so exciting to have everyone on for this one. So let's just kick it off. And I might start with you for this one, Danette. What prevents us from being patient day to day? Great question, Jez. Um, I sort of think of patience and being present as um, very similar. So I think when we get in our head and we you know, are speaking to ourselves, you know, too busy, et cetera, then we stop being so patient. And I think for me personally, if I'm tired, if I'm hungry or if I'm sick, Graham knows run away. <laughs> <laughs> and true. I tend to use my lose my patience because I'm not quite feeling great, which sort of then stops me being as patient as I could. So great question. And it's called hangry, if anyone doesn't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good one. Being hangry is definitely a good answer to this one. Uh, John, what prevents us from being patient day to day? Look, I, I think um, society's changed over the years, you know, back in, when I was a kid, so back when we were inventing the wheel, you know, if you didn't have the money for something, you had to save up for it. Um, and if the store didn't have it, you couldn't buy it. Whereas nowadays, we're very much an immediacy society. So people are used to just, well, I'll find it on the web and I'll get it shipped across and I can have express shipping so I can have it here very quickly. And, you know, it's all, let's do it now. So I think expectations have changed and the way we operate as a society has changed. So therefore, patience is something that, well, if it doesn't happen now, why not? Um, and we're losing, potentially losing a skill that, that we've had for a long time. I think other things such as um, if you have expectations of an outcome or a way that something's going to be done by other people or a time frame for it to be done, you could have all those in your head, which is great, but have you articulated that to the people around you? Um, you know, as a project manager, they're the sorts of things that I need to articulate to staff to say, I need this done by, so that you can pull that apart. Um, and if you haven't articulated them, your expectations may not be met because people aren't aware of what priority you've put on this thing. Okay? And it might be down their priority list. Um, and then you become part of the problem. So waiting isn't the problem, it's how you react to it that becomes the problem. And that's you know, a big thing for patients. How are you doing it? And are you doing it right? Mm. 
Yeah, I think you're totally right in setting those like expectations with other people can help balance that out. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, Kanika, what are some things that prevent us from being present, oh, patient, I should say, stealing mom's idea there, uh, patient day to day? Um, I think I, I also like, I'm a, I, I don't think I'm a very patient person. I personally feel like that's a weakness of mine. I like to know things as and when I kind of want to. Um, or I won't rest until I find out the things that I want to find out. Um, that's kind of how I feel. So, but I do like what Ned, Danette said about um, patients being a good, being present and everything like that. Because for me, I think patients is being a good listener. It's giving other people space and room to grow and kind of be themselves. Um, and I also agree with John about how, uh, how people are less and less patient, but I mean, it, it's also because like our attention spans are scientifically getting shorter and shorter. Um, and we're just like, so used to all kinds of instant gratification now, whether it's getting takeaway really quickly or just like getting likes on a photo if people are on social media or things like that. Um, so I guess like patience for me is just like being a good listener. And the reason we're not patient is because our attention spans are getting shorter. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I think even something you said there about um, allowing people to grow in their own way is a really good thing in terms of being patient, not just in the way that you want to be, but in the way yeah, that some absolutely. other people go. Graham, what are some ways that prevent us from uh, being patient day to day? some things that prevent us being patient. Uh, some great answers in there. So thanks for sharing that, folks. Um, I was going to just quickly touch on the, the old resilience thing because I think it's, you know, uh, where are we now? The second second week of, um, or are we at the start of the third? I don't know, it's hard to work out. Of 2022, um, this little thing called COVID apparently is still here. Who knew? Yeah, A couple of years ago, oh, I'll be over in a couple of days. Um, but, but I think, you know, all of the ongoing um, disruption and uncertainty and stress and drama around that has left a lot of people feeling pretty flat, pretty empty. And in, in the context of having, you know, energy or having fuel in their tank or having water in their well, whatever metaphor you want to use, oxygen in their tank. And um, one of the consequences of not really having much left for anyone, including ourselves, is that we tend to be a lot less patient. I think the points that John and Kanika made about, um, yeah, we're in this, um, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but we're in this, this um, space at the moment where everything is compacting time-wise. Yeah, the immediacy, the instant gratification thing. Google's an awesome tool, except one of the things it doesn't do is teach us patience, because if I want to know something, um, yeah, back in the day, going back to John's comment about, so I, I sort of ended up or arrived on planet Earth just after dirt was created or discovered. So yeah, we didn't have search, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have computers for a long time. And if you wanted to learn something, you wanted to know something, you either you know, read a book, read a newspaper or a magazine, um, or got out the old, what was it, Funk and Wagnalls encyclopedia. If you had one, you could ask somebody else Otherwise, you just didn't know. And you just had to deal with the fact that you didn't know. And that was sort of okay. Whereas today, if you want to know it, it's not a guarantee that it's going to be accurate. But if you want to find something out, you just pick up a device, ask Mrs. Google. So it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting space. It's a great question. Um, but for me, I think the biggie really is just that having some... Um, Having a reasonable level of resilience, uh, I think, helps us deal with all of the other stuff a little bit better. I hope everybody was really patient because that was a very long-winded <laughs> answer. I hope you're still there. Well, I think um, for me, what that's all boiled down to a little bit is just um, uh, that sort of ability to sit in uncomfortability, whether it's watching someone grow in a way that you don't want, whether it's not having something immediately, not knowing something, it's that sort of uncomfortableness is kind of something to sit in and feel okay with uh so graham uh i might start with you for question two here what benefits are there to patients 
Absolutely none. That's a pointless question, Jess. Let's just move on. Really, come on. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that patients... <laughs> oh, dear, this is not going well. Uh, just hang in there, folks. For those watching and listening at the moment, just practice what we are preaching. Um, I think, yeah, the first benefit is, is self-kindness or self-compassion. Um, because when we're patient, we very rarely are we patient with ourselves, although I think there are probably times when that's also a good thing to get into. But generally, if you think about when we're exercising or demonstrating patience, it's usually with other persons or other people. Um, and, and I think there's a beautiful sort of re reciprocity there. Then when we're patient with somebody else, I don't have a study to back this up. But I'd be surprised if it doesn't increase some of the feel-good chemicals for ourselves. So things like uh, serotonin and oxytocin and, and possibly dopamine, because I, yeah, giving that, that patience um, to another person it could also be to an animal, um, you know, to a pet, for argument's sake. Um, it's not only good for them, but I think it's also, if, if we do it in the right spirit, and I think intention is really important, um, I think it can be very good for us from a psychological and, and sort of spiritual perspective. Mm. And I think with that kind of stuff as well, I think a lot of those moments are very, like, like you're talking about, very rewarding, especially when something does work out and it just takes a little longer. It's always yeah. very rewarding. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Kanika, what benefits are there to patients? Uh, you're on uh, mute as well. Sorry, I just realized that. Like Graham, I want to say absolutely none. Uh, but I don't, I don't think know, I said absolutely none, Kanika. Come on. <laughs> or did I? Can we delete that? Um, I think for me, the benefits of patience, I've realized, especially with having it with other people, is that they will have it with you. And that's really good because you don't know when you need someone to be patient with you. So just from my earlier point, if you are patient with people and like even with, I guess, like um, just like yourself, it, it'll just make your life easier and it'll give you room to grow and develop in the way that you're kind that you, you're, it's kind of intended for you to do instead of just like kind of forcing yourself and how you end up being is just more like it's more deliberate but maybe not necessarily in a good way I don't know if that makes sense but um that's how I feel about it I just feel like it's good to hold space for other people because people will hold space for you in terms of patience and you never know when you're going to kind of need that <laughs> yeah totally I think that's also just such a good thing about it so great point uh John what benefits are there to patients? Um, just I've been dwelling on the, the comment you made, Jez, around that sitting in that uncomfortableness. You know, if you're not patient, you're impatient. So you get frustrated, you get angry. Um, what's driving that for you? So if you can be patient and be aware, you, you know, it, it allows you the space to be aware of what you're going through um, and what you're doing. If you're getting angry and frustrated and impatient with people, what's behind that? Um, and if you can sit back and take a breath and go, it's this, that or the other, you become, a, have a greater awareness of self, which to me is very important. Um, the benefits also is, you know, it's what Danette was saying, you're suddenly aware of your surroundings. Um, you're, you're being present in the moment rather than, you know, your mind racing and a thousand thoughts coming off. You're actually present for what's occurring. Um, which I think is a great benefit that, that we're present for what's around us and we can actually look at the colours or look at what's happening and, and be there. Um, you know, it gives you a, a peace of mind. And, and if you can be patient, then you're, suddenly you're in charge. You're not letting that fear and anger take over and drive you to somewhere that you look back five minutes later and go, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that because, you know, as Kanika was talking about, better relationships with people. So... Patience allows you to be in charge, I think. Mm. And I, I love that about the self-awareness part of it as well, where you, mm. uh, I think that that's a really, really cool, cool thought as well with it. Um, 
And Danette, final uh, response to this question, what benefits are there to patients? So I think um, that it calms the head down. So often we hear and it's chattering. And as John just talked about the frustration, when we're patient, our heart's really sitting there. We're listening to the other person. We're hearing what's said, what's not being said. And we're giving them the space to explore that as well for themselves. I think that's super important. Um, the other thing is, if you think about a patient person is the opposite of a stressed person. Hmm. So someone who's patient, they're just there, they're calm, they're quiet, they're listening to themselves and the other person. So they're quite intuitive, I think, as well. And I think when we don't do it, so the benefit of doing it is that you see the magic around you. Hmm. Whereas when you don't do it, you miss that magic around you. Yeah, great question, Jess. Yeah, and I love that point about um, being able to sort of read the people that you're talking to better with what they're saying and not saying. I think that that then is going to create those better relationships that Kate mm. is talking about and everything. So that's awesome. All right. Well, well done, everybody. Great chat so far. So dense. I feel like I'm, everyone's got something interesting to say, so I'm really enjoying it. Uh, our final question for the day, how do you become more patient? And I might start with you, Danette. So one of the things, and this comes from Oprah, um, whenever I, I find myself getting you know, a bit not so patient, she has this great phrase, which is, I'm right where I'm meant to be. And whether that's with a person, whether that's you know, in a space you know, where I'm traveling or whatever, just reminds me to just be there and not think too much. So come back to that heart thing. Um, and I think a really simple thing we can all do um, work-wise is put space in our calendar. So don't do back-to-back -back meetings and stuff like that. Create a little bit of space so you can have those conversations and be patient and present with others, which is going to boost those relationships and make work that much better as well. Great question. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, John, how do you become more patient? Very good question. Um, and I, I don't know, I don't believe there's any easy answer to it because if you don't have patience, it's something you've got to work on. Um, there are a lot of people that are very patient people, but there are a lot of people who just jump in and, and they'll need to work on what they're doing. I guess the big one is breathe. Take a breath. Rather than just react, um, stop. Stop and breathe. Stop and step back. You know, whatever it is you need to do, whether it's a physical thing like take a deep breath and exhale it slowly or whether it's, you know, take a physical step back or, um, you know, go and get a drink or a cup of coffee or, or something to break the mental thought. But just breathe. Um, and I, I think if you can be conscious of, of where, what is happening for you, it allows you to do those things. Um, but it's, it's a work in progress and I don't think any of us have it right. Um, I mean, Graham might be the exception, of course, but the rest of us, um, I think we've got to work on it. And there are days where we will be patient and everything can flow, even when times are tough. But um, there are other days where it's, it's not the case, you know, and things might be grave, but they don't need to be serious. So take a step back and have a breath. Mm. That's a great uh, little tip, I guess, if you're feeling stressed out, that's just, you know, just break it up give yourself yeah. that opportunity to be patient. I think that's a, a great tip. Thanks for that, John. Kanika, what, how do, how do you become more patient? Um, I feel like, like I said, I think I'm just generally a very impatient person, but I feel if I compare myself to someone who was born in the mid 2000s, <laughs> I'm very patient. <laughs> so I also think a lot of that patience <laughs> comes from also not having had access to Google for the first 12 years of my life and just like so actually cool. reading lots of encyclopedias and books and things like that but I think something that's really helped me ground myself and be patient is gardening because it is a slow process it's not something wow. that happens overnight and like I think in the last two years the I've started so many things from seed and just like it's taken me over like a year to grow some things and it's just been really nice and beautiful to like look after it 
and pay attention to it and look at it every other day and sometimes see absolutely no change and still be very happy and very proud of whatever's happening. Um, like I think a really good exercise for me in patience was um, this year in our veggie patch, I just saw little tomato seedlings coming up from like they self seeded and I just like kind of rescued them and like looked after them every day in my little greenhouse and now they're so big and they're so beautiful and I'm going to get some tomatoes from them soon so I think gardening and like actually seeing something grow is a very tactile and like um, physical way to have patience like it's something you can practice doing so I would recommend growing a plant maybe from a seed mm. um, and also I think I've another thing that I didn't realize was like something that I did that was really good for me in terms of being patient was um, going back to taking pictures on film sometimes because there's only so many photos you can take and you can't see all of them until you have to like put in a deliberate effort to go get them like developed and like you also have to pay money <laughs> to have that happen so it really just like makes you think about like what you're taking photos of or when you're taking photos or things like that. So I would say these two things in uh, in practice were really good for me to help build patience. Mm. Yeah, that's that's good. And nice. they're like, yeah, things that uh, have patience built into them sort of, you know, as part of their process. So that's pretty cool. Good suggestion. Graham, mm. how do you become more patient? Uh, well, the easy answer, uh, and I acknowledge in John's comment that, that maybe there isn't one, uh, for me, the easy answer is just follow the dragons. <laughs> you know, I think that that says it all. Um, well yeah, I, I could sort of pick little bits and pieces out of everyone's answers. I think the idea of stopping, because we are in this, yeah, um, most certainly most of the Western society, things just continue to speed up. Um, I read a, actually an interesting blog from Seth Godin where he was talking about convenience. And this goes back to your comment about you know, sitting in th with things that make us uncomfortable. So sort of sitting in that, in that discomfort. And, and I, I wonder whether one of the things that could help us build more patience just broadly is deliberately choose to do things that are less convenient or to take options that are less convenient, whatever that might be. Um, a little more specifically, if yeah, the self-awareness thing is so important, because if I if I have no clue that I'm impatient or that I have little patience, then I can't do anything about it. So firstly, you now when am I finding opportunities to stop, to slow down deliberately, to to you know, detach from devices and stop and think about my behavior and my thinking and, and how am I showing patience or where have I been showing impatience and then what's triggering that and how could I respond differently um, and the other thing sorry just one uh, quickly if I find that there's a particular person it could be a colleague or a sibling a family member you know who I'm, I'm often impatient around um, again same thing firstly what's behind that uh, and secondly particularly if it's a colleague or a neighbor or somebody that I know that I perhaps don't know them that well maybe if I got to know them better that might change some of my uh, biases, some of my, going back to a, a phrase John used earlier, some of my expectations. And if I shift my expectations about somebody else, that can help me become much more patient. Very good. Well, yeah, th thanks for all these great answers. I loved all of them. And again, I think this is going to be one I'd listen back to and uh, try and absorb a bit more deeply because it's very dense. Uh, so thank you all very much. Uh, I might just get uh, some final thoughts from everyone. So, Graham, what are your final thoughts on the power of patience? Uh, last, so three words, stop, breathe, and um, resilience. Wow. Efficient. Well, there you go. Thanks, Graham. That's for the impatient people that are still correct. listening. That Very good. <laughs> Kanika, some final thoughts on the power of patience. Uh, you just unmute. Um, I think I feel like there's this like popular saying that you like here growing up that patience is a virtue, and it really, really is because <laughs> it's very hard. 
<laughs> especially for me. But I am working on it. And I feel like doing these little exercises and things that I do with myself to kind of like center myself um, and taking the moment have really been helping. So I would say like for people that don't think they're very patient, find something that you can do that helps you exercise that part of your brain. Um, if you can't directly apply it to people in your life just yet, it's a process. <laughs> Absolutely. <yeah. laughs> and you can always listen to this podcast again for some patience tips if you're ever stuck there. John, what are your final thoughts on the power of patience? I think if you're patient, you're going to get more done. That your ability to take a breath is a lot shorter than when you get angry and frustrated and want to kick the cat or whatever the you know the proverbial is. It's, um, you know, that sets you off on a rant and you're not going to be as focused as what you could be. So if you want to get stuff done, take that breath, take that step back. And I think patience will also help with your relationship with people. Awesome. That's, that's a great one right there. And Danette, our final thoughts on the power of patience. I always love the, the saying, this is happening for me, not to me. So I think when we're patient, we learn the lesson there and then if something's happening. And as everyone said, you know, it creates that connection because we can listen to others, we can listen to ourselves. So I think why rush life? We're, we're already, you know, the, the world around us is rushing. Being quiet, being still, being patient, super important because you that's where you see the magic. And I'm so grateful we live on a farm because our mail comes two to three times a week. So it, in a lot of ways, trains us to be patient. Mm. Great question, Jess. What about you? I'm interested for you. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, I think something kind of that Graham was talking about, and I think even Kanika was talking about, stepping away from technology and stuff. One thing that does show me a little bit of patience is whenever I listen to a vinyl, and this is kind of just a broader, I guess, metaphor for patience, uh, as opposed to CDs where you can skip songs, I like that you can't skip songs on a vinyl, even if you don't like them, because then they kind of, if it's an album you like, you listen to them again and again, and those songs start to build up, like you can appreciate them, even though they're not your favorite song in the vinyl. And then they have like a nice place in your heart. When you think of the other songs that you do, like you sort of put them with songs you don't, it's because you have more patience and time to appreciate the whole thing. So I think it can even help you appreciate things you don't like, you know, patience. So um, anyway, yeah. So anyway, thank you everybody so much for today's uh, podcast. What a great one. We got so much info in there, so much to listen to. I really, really enjoyed it. Very dense. Like I said, I took a lot of notes, um, but I just want to thank everyone for being on. I want to thank Kanika and John for being back on the uh, yeah. podcast for the year. Great to see you Woo back. Um, <laughs> um, and to Danette and Graham, thanks again for being on as always. And to everybody listening, uh, you can either watch this or listen to this. And until next time, have a magical week. Thanks, thanks Jess. Thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thanks, Bye.